In this episode, we'll dive deeper into what these single domain antibodies are, because you're probably wondering what is he talking about. They're also called nanobodies, and importantly, I'll explain why you should know them. Now, in terms of structure, you probably know this structure, which is a conventional antibody. So it has a heavy chain and it has a light chain. So the light chain, there are two, and the heavy chain, there are also two in a conventional antibody. But there are some things like heavy chain only antibodies, which only have the heavy chain and only have three domains actually. And if you take the variable part, which binds to the antigen or binds to its target, the variable part of the heavy chain of heavy chain only antibodies, then you have what is called a single domain antibody or also called a nanobody. Now, in terms of size, this is something very obvious. This here, the single domain antibody is roughly tenfold smaller than a conventional antibody. These heavy chain only antibodies in nature, in biology, they originate from a certain species of animals. They only are found in this type of animal. Now, you know these animals probably, they spit in your face, they're sometimes very fluffy, There's, they can make a lot of funny faces, and these are llamas and alpacas. And they are belonging to the family of camelids, which also includes camels and dromedaries. Now, why should you know this as a biomedical researcher? Why is it interesting as a physician? And why is it interesting as a patient? Now, taking these VHHs or single domain antibodies or nanobodies, you can use them as therapeutics, as diagnostics, and as research tools. But you might be wondering, wait, conventional antibodies can do this too? They're also used in these areas, actually. Well. These nanobodies actually have their advantages and the first one is, as I said, due to their small size, which has some inherent consequences. They also have high affinities, nano to picomolar affinities, which means that they strongly, strongly bind to their target, to their antigen. They're very easy to engineer. You can actually multimerize them so you can chain multiple nanobodies together in various formats, so formatting. They're more stable in a thermal and chemical way. So higher degree exposure or higher pH or lower pH exposure, and they stay in their own fault. They stay in their nanobody format, actually. They are more soluble. Because they're smaller, they can tissue penetrate deeper. So for instance, in a tumor, they can go through the lining of your kidneys faster, so the blood clearance is faster. They can bind through uh, hidden epitopes on a certain protein or target. You can do alternative routes of administration. They are not that immunogenic, so your body won't fight as much if you inject it as a therapeutic. And this is a very important one. You can manufacture them in microbial cells, which comes with low production cost. So as diagnostics, for example, you can have recombinant fluorescent probes when you attach a fluorophore to an antibody. For imaging, you can add a radio label to it and then inject it and have them sit in a PET scan, for instance, the patients that are injected with these diagnostics. As therapeutics, you can apply them in almost any field you can think of. Oncology, inflammation, infection, toxicity, you name it. So given these advantages, it won't be a surprise if I say that already a lot of companies have been built upon this single domain antibody technology. For instance, Ablinx, which is Belgian-based and Belgian-originated, but has recently been taken over by Sanofi, which is a big pharmaceutical player from France, they actually made the term nanobody and registered it as a trademark. So nanobody, the term, you can often find it also in literature, but it actually is a registered trademark, meaning that it's a single domain antibody coming from llamas, alpacas, or camelid. Now there are other companies as well, Abcor you have here, Confo Therapeutics, AgroSafe, Inhibrix, Chromotech, all companies based on this technology, and depending on which field they operate, therapeutic, research tool, diagnostic, there are probably much more companies already busy with it, but I just put some examples here to give you an idea that the companies are already being formed and this technology is already implemented. As a matter of fact, Ablinx already has their first therapeutic that is FDA approved and it's ready to treat patients. So this technology is penetrating already the medical field drastically. 
So coming back to me saying that heavy chain only antibodies are only found in camelids, I was actually lying, they're also found in sharks. However, they look a lot different. So what they're called in sharks is immunoglobulin NARs. And if you take the variable part of this heavy chain only antibody, you also have what's called a VNAR, which is also a single domain antibody. So this is actually cool from sharks and from camelids you can derive these single domain antibodies, which is revolutionary. And based on these out of sharks, there's also a company called Oceanics that also is busy building upon this technology. So guys, to conclude, single domain antibodies can provide new jobs for biomedical graduates because new biotech and biomed companies are emerging. They can provide new tools for biomedical researchers to use in their projects. They can provide new diagnostics for biomedical scientists in a medical lab to check human biopsies, whether it be liquid biopsies or solid biopsies. And the most important thing is that these new diagnostics and therapeutics are applicable for patients, all the while research on their own diseases, their own human diseases is empowered with these single domain antibodies as new tools.